Hello, everybody. Glad you could make it. I finally did. Alana was, Lena was here waiting for me. <laughs> oh, so tonight's episode, I had mentioned we're going to be doing 80s cartoons theme from one of my favorite cartoons, Dungeons and Dragons. But first, if you didn't catch the last episode, or if you did, um, I had started painting a conflagration worm, I believe it was called, for Goodman Games' upcoming um, Dungeon or Dungeon Denizens monster book. Um, I finished it up uh, the other day. I did redo some of the work that I was seemed to be floundering on trying to oil paint live. Um, but uh, let me show you that, if anyone is here that saw. So this was the conflagration worm all finished up. And it's oils on about 9 by 12 sheet. I think it looks good. I did some work uh, changing. I pretty much repainted this whole part up there. Um, I added more tone. I had gotten this <laughs> mouth thing done. I added some more tone to it, went over the teeth, and changed the mouth hole from just being a black hole to trying to make it look like there's a, you know, fire glow coming out from it. So... I was able to salvage it, I think, and turned out all right. So you'll be able to find that in Goodman Games' upcoming Dungeon Denizens. Is it that focus or not? Uh, it's just focused down there. But yeah, keep an eye out for Dungeon Denizens. Kick starting next month, I believe. Yep, going to be starting sometime uh, in February. All right. So, um, in an effort for tonight's um, Dungeons & Dragons cartoon illustration, um, I was rushing <laughs> the last couple hours, two, three hours, trying to get the drawing done so that I can kind of ink it. Um, so, here is the drawing. Let's see if I can zoom out if that will help. So there's the drawing I ended up doing. Um, normally, I, I like to draw and, and piece things together rather than to try and draw right on um, the paper I'm going to be doing it because oftentimes I, yeah, I'm not happy with things or I get proportions off and whatnot. And... I wasn't happy with the proportions here with Venger. It seemed a little too stumpy compared to uh, Dungeon Master. If any of you are familiar with the cartoon or have watched it, anyone in the audience watch Dungeons and Dragons cartoon at all? I know I watched it a little bit um, and Jeff has seen it. I'm sure... Uh... Anyone else in the chat probably has. Sure. Excellent. Well, so what I did was uh, rushing. Uh, I was going to try and do it right on this uh, 11 by 15 watercolor paper, um, but I wasn't happy enough with the proportion. So I quickly scanned it, uh, did some adjustments digitally, lengthening, um, Venger. I think I changed up his arm a little bit. I reduced Dungeon Master a little bit, printed it off, and taped that together. So I'm going to be using using my light little light uh, table thing here and tracing it, or maybe inking it. We'll see if I go straight to ink. Um, so, so there is the drawing. 
And to help me, um, I was lucky enough to have been snagging things off the internet. So these were some style sheets um, from the cartoon characters, which helped me get an idea. So I didn't use an exact, say, Venger face, but it was similar to this one. I was going to do that angle anyway. Um, of course, theirs probably looks a lot cooler, but yeah, I think it worked out all right. Um, so this helped give me an idea of what's all going on and, um, you know, what his uh, face and stuff looks like, his robes and stuff from different angles. And there's another another shot of some style sheets showing Vendor in different poses. And then there's Dungeon Master with some different headshots, different poses. And this is the, there's the pose that I made up. Um... Yeah, I was pretty happy with it. I wasn't too sure on the face off the bat, but yeah, I think it worked out all right. I, I didn't copy one exact, um, but yeah, you get the idea of the shape of his head. And then yeah, I worked with his mouth and gave him a squinty eye and twiddly hand. I think it should work all right. So... I think I'm ready to try and trace this, see how this shows up with the light table. I've never done this um, for you guys. So. There you go. I don't know how much line, camera line stuff we'll see in here. I wonder if I up the exposure, if that'll help. Does that help? All right. So what I'll do now is I'll trace this onto the watercolor paper. Uh, as you can see, oops, and of course I've got it flipped. So it'll, I'm going to have to switch that around. That's what happens when you're in a rush, kids. Um, but anyway, you can see I kind of stretched Venger, made Dungeon Master a little smaller. Um, so let me go ahead. Oops. And that got unplugged. <laughs> Today is definitely a Monday, guys. Is it a Monday for you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm sick. So uh, if I don't talk that much, it's probably because... Uh... Chris is hearing me cough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I had to get up for a minute and re-plug in my little light thing. Let's try this again. So did everyone catch my conflagration worm that I showed from last episode. I if believe did. so. I don't know if anyone was there to have seen it initially, but... Oops. Well, there's a first hitting the camera with my head. <laughs> Trying to scoot up. All right. I could almost go right in with inks. Hmm. Maybe I should just go right in with inks for you guys. Might be able to do that. What's the worst that can happen? I mess it up.
No. Man, I really, really need music. I should have thrown something on in the background. Weird for me trying to <laughs> trying to realize I, I need to talk while I'm doing this to keep people entertained, especially when I'm not actually working on anything yet. It's okay, I can cut this in the edit. Well, the live people. You know, they're paying 10 bucks to see this show, and, you know, I don't want to let them down. Everybody's paid, right? I think so. I left the hat outside. I hope they saw it. Okay. We don't want to let any freeloaders in here. Let's see. Where do I start tonight? I'm going to bump my head on this again, I think. Some reason these Mondays are seeming more Monday than they did last last season. I feel like that's just the theme of this year is how Monday can we make a Monday? Mm-hmm. My eyes are like in a weird place where it's like uh, my glasses are, I want to get too close to look at it. I have the light so low in here. My eyes don't want to focus completely. Is there anything else I can complain about? Does your nose itch? Does your back ache? Do your feet my hurt? Nose, my nose doesn't itch. That's a plus. Hmm. <laughs> Jeff asks, how is your hair today? About as good as his. Switch up brushes. See if this helps. A little hair on the end of my brush. At this rate, I don't know what's going on. You said you're sick? Yeah, I um, am hoping it's not COVID, but while I was at, uh, at college today, I had a scratchy throat, so I wore a mask, because I'm like, well, I don't know what I have, and I don't want to give it to somebody. 
So sure. scratchy throat, my nose feels stuffed up. Um, I've had an off and on cough every now and then. And then um, I felt feverish when I was heading home. So I'm starting to think that, like, I've got the symptoms that I had back in August when I got COVID. So I'm yeah. thinking maybe I have COVID again, and I'm hoping not. We'll see. That stinks. Hopefully not. Sorry, trying to manage my brush that's well you wouldn't think I'm a professional at all <laughs> let's try this again Change the angle. So, not sure if anyone out there watched the cartoon as we were talking about, but Donnie Most from Happy Days was a voice actor in the cartoon. If you're familiar, familiar with him and the cartoon at all, he played Eric. And the actor who did the voice of Presto sadly passed away not too long ago. He was, I, I believe he was on 8 is Enough, Eight is Enough as well. He was, I think, the youngest one on 8 is Enough. Oops, not on the not on the screen for you. So you got another show you got to work on ap do after this, eh? Yeah, um, right after this show is going to be Spellburn. Um, so that'll be fun. Nice. Forgive my naivety, but what does Spellburn do? Um... Uh, I don't know if I could give you an answer, uh, because it's an old show that was a podcast, um, with Julian, Jen, and I forget who the other one is. I think another one does the show, but Julian and Jen are back with Spellburn. Um, 
they i believe they it's a podcast about like um modules and um i can't go off of what the christmas special was because the christmas special was kind of a returning thing um sure. so it's uh i'm a terrible person i i couldn't tell you off the top of my head exactly what it is but it's a podcast about um old school adventures and dcc and like uh getting together talking to authors and creators of uh modules and stuff um and how they got their inspiration and things like that at least from what i could remember um from looking up the stuff but if anybody is interested on the goodman games website is a blurb and or synopsis whichever one you want to call it um on the schedule on the twitch schedule that is much more concise than what I'm trying with my little feeble, sick brain to <laughs> splice words together. I've been having issues, like, talking all day. It's horrible. Sounds like I'm rubbing off on you. That's my life. I don't know what the heck to say. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was trying to explain to somebody today how I cooked the chicken, and there were, and I said that I left the smaller piece of chicken, which was thinner, on the stove longer and i'm like wait no i meant the other one i left the bigger one in the pan a little bit longer blah 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 it was just really dumb <laughs> i was like i can't i can't even explain how i cook chicken i was cooking chicken the other day and i was able to test out my fire alarms uh, smoke detectors while i was doing so so it was a twofer at least you know it works right they both work. Anything going on in chat? Is it all deathly quiet in there? Uh, not deathly quiet, but we're talking about, um, uh, I'm going to really butcher your name, so I'm going to call you Z. Um, they, uh, that, the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon was one of the first entries of the D and D brand in Brazil, which was interesting. Oh sure, yeah, it's it's big in Brazil. They uh, Brazil and Spain, they've got a lot of different products and stuff um, that they didn't have over here. And actually, was it Spain? Uh, I think it was Spain that just did within the last year or two they did a car commercial with live action characters from the uh, cartoon here it's actually pretty well done if uh, that interests anybody
Anybody have any other favorite 80s cartoon? He-Man. Thundercats. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't watch He-Man as much. It's... I watched Transformers a little bit more, and Thundercats is good. I never really I got into Transformers. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a fanatic or anything, but I watched Transformers. Um, another 80s that I liked that was short-lived was Thundar the Barbarian. Ah, uh, yes. Yep. That's actually, I would say that's very DCC, seemingly. I was thinking like two stupid dogs, but I think that was nineties. Two stupid dogs. Yeah, it would play. It was kind of like Cow and Chicken was, where it would have like the main, the main show was like Cow and Chicken, but and that one was definitely nineties, early two thousands. But like Cow and Chicken, and then the I R Baboon and I Am Weasel was like a subsidiary cartoon within Cow and Chicken. And, like, Two Stupid Dogs was a cartoon that was within Secret Squirrel, which was also one of my favorite cartoons. <laughs> so it would be, like, uh -huh. an episode of Secret Squirrel, and then the second half of the 30-minute program was, like, an episode of Two Stupid Dogs, at least from what I remember. And then they started playing them as separate cartoons in the early 2000s on Boomerang, I believe. But I remember watching Secret Squirrel, and now that I think about it, I think that was the 90s. <laughs> It might have been. Jeff says he didn't watch too many back then. He watched Star Blazers and D&D. &D. Um, NWI Dungeon Crawler says Transformers and Thunder. So. Yep. Granted, all of the 80s cartoons I watched were on VHSs that my dad had, like, found reruns playing, download, and, like, uh -huh. you know, recorded them, downloaded, <laughs> listen to me, um, but it recorded on VHS and stuff. It's, like, the same reason why I watched Mystery Science Theater after it stopped airing on sci-fi was because we had recordings. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching um, old versions of the Gundam anime that used to air. It was like, it was like Toonami, but it wasn't, um, it was whatever sci-fi, I can't remember if Toonami changed hands and it was like, it was a sci-fi thing and then it became a Cartoon Network thing, or if it was a Cartoon Network thing that became sci-fi like sci-fi bought the rights to toonami i can't remember which uh -oh. it changed hands at some point but i remember watching gundam on the sci-fi channel at one point and it was like it was an old version of gundam it was uh but that that's as close to transformers as i think i ever got was like gundam anime <laughs> and that's not even like transformers you know mm-hmm mm -hmm. Oh, Star uh, Dice Station Zebra brought up uh, Force Five, which had Granzier and Dangard Ace. I never watched Force Five. Force Five. Hmm. Sounds familiar, but. Not quite. Not quite getting it.
Another one was um, Battle of the Planets. I like that a lot. That was a Sometimes <laughs> I probably like the intros music better than the actual cartoons, and that's what drew, drew draws me to it, drew me to it, draws me to it. I don't know, but Deathly quiet here, just listening to the wind howl. Ow, ow. Close. <laughs> I think if I went any higher pitched, it would probably hurt me. So that you get crappy, <laughs> you get crappy wind howling noises. <laughs> <laughs> that cracked me up more than it should have. I am so sorry, Twitch chat. <laughs> I was very nice howling wind. Jeff, I am I'm sorry that it's going to be a week of Mondays. I understand the feeling very very well. The week of Mondays. I think I didn't manage to mess up his face too much there. That's a positive. I put the word out on the uh, Dungeons and Dragons cartoon page on Facebook. Anyone from over there make it? But 
thought it might be of some interest. So how is your school going? Uh, it's only the first, like, week, week and a half, so easy so far. I'm not looking forward to later in the semester, I guess. Mm-hmm. Spring break before you know it. If that means anything. I wonder if I need reading glasses or something. My glasses are at that point where I'm like close enough that I don't know if I See better with them or without them when I'm doing this. When I'm this close. So Hang on. <laughs> oh, sorry, I had to die real quick. Um, so 
was the big bad a lich, if I'm remembering right? Or was What's he just that? like a warlock? Um, I don't know what what you call him. He was Venger. <laughs> At uh, one part in the uh, show, there is an episode they alluded to him being Dungeon Master's son. wonder if that was, I'm guessing that was around the time Empire Strikes Back may have revealed Darth Vader being Luke Skywalker's father. Sorry if I spoiled that for anybody. How dare you? How could you do such a thing? I almost said that the cartoon was 30 years old and it's not, but I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Was it 83 or 85? Somewhere around there. I think it's somewhere around 83 to 85, I think. <laughs> Jeff is saying who is Darth Vader. Exactly. Who is Darth Vader? All right, the good old dungeon master's done, I think. Let's move on down to Avenger. Avenger. Jeff says it's looking great so far. What does Jeff know? I don't know. He's looking at the same thing I'm looking at, and I think it looks good. Don't tell me it looks great. <laughs> Thank you. It's weird, Dungeon Master does, or uh, Vendor doesn't really have a nose. I'm a little worried on these details. Look at that. <clears throat> so sorry for putting my hand in there if i didn't mention i can't remember <laughs> I, got, I put that in to help me see better
hair on the end of my brush is bugging me. Cut it off. Off with the hair. Anybody seen Avatar yet? Oh, are you talking about the new one that came out? Yeah. Hmm. No. I have not. Um, I had to think if I've seen the trailer, and I have seen the trailer. I didn't bother to go see it in the theater, though. <laughs> Dice Nation Zebra said, no, the first one bored me too much. The problem is, the problem is, is that I don't know why they made a sequel. Um, partially because it wasn't that... From what I remember of it, because I watched it back in high school, what I remember of the first one is that there wasn't really... It was like a forgettable story. It wasn't anything groundbreaking as far as narrative was concerned, but it was a technical masterpiece because a lot of things that were on the screen um, were very, very well done for what they had as far as, like, um, like graphics were concerned. Um, you know, it was, it was very groundbreaking as far as CGI. But it wasn't a it wasn't a powerful story in any means, so I'm just confused <laughs> as to why there's a sequel when you, you didn't make anything worth having a sequel for, <laughs> at least in my eyes. Well, you can just get the heck out of here. Just kidding. I didn't really care for it much. I haven't seen the new one. I, uh, it's kind of, yeah, I didn't, uh, I think that was the first time 3D had just come back out, and Jeff and I went and saw that. The 3D didn't do anything for me, kind of bugged me, so, yeah. I ha I haven't seen the uh, new one yet. It hasn't uh, interested me all that much. I'm right there with you as far as that goes. There hasn't really been many uh, many interesting movies out lately. At least uh, that have piqued my interest. There was a horror movie that came out, um, uh, it was leaked, so they did an earlier release of it, um, but it's, uh, Skin of a Rink, and it's, like, an analog horror, uh, if you don't know what analog horror is, it's basically, um, sort of, like, creepy imagery that seems like it's from a home video kind of category in a sense not found footage but um a lot of analog horror has lingering shots um in the dark and it's kind of an old it like it looks like an old analog style camera 
um, by its angles and its, you know, effects and graphics on the screen. Um, but that one seemed interesting to me. Like, I'd, I'd try out mm -hmm. watching Skinamarink just because it is experimental in horror and... I want something experimental out of horror. <laughs> you know, I don't want another uh -huh. slasher film. I don't want another creepy pasta, you know, copy paste monster like the Bye Bye Man or um oh what was the one that was last year Smile or you know something like that. Like I want something that is experimental and very much up for interpretation because a lot of horror gets lost on me when it the the message the clear message of the story is a little too on the nose so gotcha yeah we've had this talk about me and horror and my lack my thereof mind. <laughs> Lack of watching it. Pardon me. Well, hopefully, chat is more alive than I am. I think we're all coming down with the case of the Mondays, and we're all just kind of zoning out and watching you draw. Monday, Monday. That's it. That's my Monday singing. It was beautiful. When are you going on tour? Soon as I get asked. But I know what's going to happen soon. I've got a feeling. Got a feeling. Barry Manilow is going to call me any day now. And we're going to go out. <laughs> Jeff said today's just our Monday uh, ASMR session going on. Pretty much. That's what it seems like it. Hey, Pixelated Bunny, thank you for the lurk. 
You got a lurker? We got a lurker. Nice. I really need to set up commands on this channel so when people, like, type in exclamation point lurk, something funny pops up. I'll do that when I have more energy to be creative. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that later <laughs> this week. Well, you know oh. more about... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say you know more about Twitch than I do. Thankfully, you're running this fiasco. I was about to say, I would hope I do. I'm uh, It's my job. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be very hey. good at my job if I didn't. There are plenty of people that don't know what they're doing on their job. You know, that's fair. That's absolutely fair. Um, Look at me. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Sure you do. You got lines. Make it till you make it. <laughs> I was just thinking, um, you had mentioned, we were talking about, like, movies and stuff, um, and... I, uh, I was just thinking tomorrow is my The Art of Film class, is what it's called. Um, oh, yeah. So it's technically an English class, but um, we, we like, discuss um, movies and, like, a lot of them are psychological because the English teacher has, like, most of her stuff is, um, like, psychoanalysis of books and movies and mm -hmm. um so all of our all of our films are in some way like a psychological movie um whether it be whether it be horror or thriller or um not um like yeah. our first like our first movie is like a drama i believe but we're gonna be watching like get out whiplash and we need to talk about Kevin and Gone Girl, which are all, like, either thrillers or, like, Get Out is, like, a thriller but also a horror. So, mm -hmm. I'm really interested in this class because I've never seen Whiplash, but I'm excited to. Because um, I've heard really, really good things about it. Yeah. Nice. It's also got... Oh man, what's his name? Something Simmons. J.K. Simmons, is that his name? Mm-hmm. Um, Sounds right, I like him. And I've only, the only time I've ever seen him... you about Richard Simmons. No, Let's it's not it. Richard Simmons. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, yeah, like, uh, J.K. Simmons, I've only ever seen him, I think the last time I watched him in something was, he was playing a military uh, person. And he's got a very militant attitude from the trailer of Whiplash, which will be interesting because mm -hmm. like, I think it'll be interesting to see how he plays in a not military position, but with like a very, you know, tyrannical attitude still. And the Naughty sure. Burrito mentioned that we need to talk about Kevin as a gut punch of a movie. I am looking forward to it um, because it, it was on my watch list forever and i kept forgetting to go back and see it because it was never on netflix which is it was never on netflix for uh for me to watch and it was never or at least i don't think it was on netflix where i am and it's not I, it's never been on amazon prime and i'm like i'm not gonna <laughs> i'm not gonna download another and sign up for another streaming service mm -hmm. um to try and find it so but I'm I'm looking forward to, to watching that. Nice. Uh, another uh, J.K. Simmons movie that they're not movie, but TV series, I think was Amazon Prime. I can't remember the name of it, though, but they had a secret door in their, on their property. It was a 
It was a very nice TV series. I know that doesn't give you much information. <laughs> Wouldn't, wouldn't want to give too much away. I, uh, I only watched a little bit of that 70s show when it was out, um, but Netflix has a uh, sequel, I guess, called That 90s Show. That was actually pretty good, if if you like that sort of thing. But like I said, I didn't watch the uh, the original show all that much. I don't know if anyone's saw that or not. I'm switching up my brushes tonight. I'm not uh, having a hard time finding one that's working the way I like it. That's, that's what I'll have to do. Yeah, I don't want to do that fourth finger over there. I don't like <laughs> I draw it. Probably gonna mess it all up here. I'll ignore it for now.
Seems like we had more fun last season with the episodes. I don't know if it's because I'm trying to do things that have me focused a bit more or what? Oh, what was that? Blurby blurb. Did you hear me coughing? Is that what that was? I think that's what that was. No one else heard it but you. I had myself oh, muted. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a bloop bloop. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was probably me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did we? Lose our lurker, or? Nah, they're still here. Lurking just means that they're not, you know, saying anything in chat. I gotcha. Nothing wrong with that. Thanks for being here. Bob the Magic Cone, or Bobo the Magic Cone, sorry, I read it wrong. Uh, it says the Dungeon Master got this in the bag. Somehow I got ink on my hand. And... Salvaging them. 
It's not a mistake, it's a feature. A feature? A feature. C. I didn't want that feature. <laughs> Go home, feature. What is the feature drunk? Mm hmm. I gotta say, I've always liked his cape robe thing. Yeah, it was, I, I was, I don't know if I did it 100% justice, I was trying, but. I'm going to be honest, I think that's the same reason why I liked uh, the Sleeping Beauty the most out of, like, all the Disney princesses, like, I watched when I was a kid, is, mm -hmm. like, I think Malefic Maleficent was just the coolest looking villain out of all of the, like, Disney princess stories. It's like, you know, sure. the, uh, the wicked, uh... The Wicked Queen from Snow White didn't do it for me. Like, I thought she was a little overdone with her crown. And then there was, like, the, uh... I don't know. Oh, what was the other one? Um... You know, it was the evil stepsister or stepmother in Cinderella. So boring. And then there was, like, I don't know. There's this really cool robed horned lady that's, like, really <laughs> upset that she wasn't invited to to the princess's birthday. So she cursed the family. And she can turn into a dragon? Um, excuse me. <laughs> I haven't seen Sleeping Beauty in... Man, since I was a kid, actually. I've got Disney Plus. I should probably put it on. Just because of that. Isn't, isn't there a dragon scene in there, too? Yeah, Maleficent turns into a dragon and the prince That's has nice. to slay her. It's like, it's the coolest. She's the coolest, like, Disney princess villain, in my opinion. It's also, like super good in its like animations and color scheme it's the same reason why i love like the lion king so much is it's so vibrant with its colors in every way <laughs> faith lord 99 says she took slay queen into a different meaning <laughs> yes <laughs> hi gray babe how you doing <clears throat> excuse me i'm gonna mute I have not actually seen um, The Lion King. I've probably seen parts of it. It's probably my favorite, like, Disney movie. I, I don't know, I just, I love it so much. It's so, it's silly, it's fun, it's tragic. Oh, right, it's just Shakespeare as animated lions. <laughs> It's basically, uh, what was it? Is it basically Hamlet? I think that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, I think they were inspired by the story of Hamlet to making the, the film. Okay. Uh, Matt, this is, uh, just for fun. 
Chris just thought it would be it would be fun to do some eighties cartoons nonsense. Uh, nonsense. <laughs> I was waiting on you to say um, something. <laughs> the best 80s cartoon ever. And now I'm screwing up my paper left and right here. I thought I'd do something fun since I like Dungeons and Dragons. I uh, did a sketch today, scanned it, made some adjustments and everything to it because um, I thought the character size was a little off, reduced him and lengthened Venger and printed it off and uh, using my light table, inking it. So yeah, this this isn't for isn't for uh, DCC or anything, unfortunately. Seem to be, I don't know if there's more enjoyment out of the episodes where just uh, did it on the fly, did the did the drawing and the and the inking and stuff. But Hoping I'd at least get this inked getting there, but I might be a little shy of uh, cut off time, especially if you got another show coming up tonight. Yeah, we probably got about 20 minutes left before I need to head off and go start working on that show. Mm hmm. And I can relax with the pressure off. <laughs> well, what we'll have to do next time. Brad says, quick, pit some pressure on Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, no. What's that? We got a random Joker fact. Uh-oh. We have one or we have to have one? Uh-oh, we have to have one. Oh, is that what we're being told? 
a random fact, huh? I was running late, rushing to get this thing ready for tonight. Is that random enough? Sure. Probably not. Yeah, I was, I was scrambling trying to get this thing drawn. And then, I, like I said, I wasn't happy with the proportions. And so then I had to rush and scan. And I don't know how. Other comic book artists can make such incredibly nice, long, smooth lines, but uh, doesn't always work for me. Try a different brush. All right, hmm. I have a random fact for you. Okay. I was looking them up because <laughs> I'm a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. The Dr. Seuss classic, Green Eggs and Ham, apparently started as a bet. Apparently, uh, a bet with his editor that he bet with his editor that he couldn't create a book using fewer than 50 words. And the editor... Uh, Bennett Kerf put $50 on the line and lost. Uh huh. Maybe we should do that, uh, Roll next time. Roll to see who's going to do the drawing. <laughs> we already did this once and you, you lost, remember? I did. Also... Worth another shot. That's true, that's true. Also, um, Brad uh, put a joke in, um, in the chat. Which is Sweden doesn't export export its cattle. It wants to keep its Stockholm. Oh man. <laughs> I appreciate that one. Resorting to making noises now. And uh, to giving you support, Jeff says, whether you finish it or not, it's cool to see that you're using different methods of illustration. Last week it was oil painting, this week it's light tables. Yeah, I don't think I've done a light table before on here. something different <laughs> Bobo the magic cone says it really brightens the show <laughs> uh, I love puns
Sure, what I want to do with that. I didn't like speech class either. <laughs> trying to talk in front of people even though I'm not in front of people it still feels almost the same way yeah don't blame you Bobo the magic cone would like to know if you play any uh, RPGs um I do have a every other Tuesday night uh, D and D game that uh, I got wrangled into uh, about a year ago. Otherwise, I hadn't uh, hadn't particularly uh, played played much. Kind of surprisingly, I do. I wish I could play more, but I actually like a lot of board games. Been doing that a lot. Do you have a favorite board game you've played? Oh, man. Favorites. There's <laughs> all kinds of go-tos. Um, whatever I can get friends to play. Um, I was liking uh, Agricola, but I haven't played that in a while. That's one where... It's a little harder to find people to play because it's a, it's a longer game and it's a real thinky game. Sometimes my thinkiness is a little slow. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I had the same problem playing, uh, oh, what was it? Um, I've forgotten the name of it. It was it was kind of like a, a deck builder, but it wasn't, if that makes sense. Like, the idea is that you had to get in your hand, like, three specific cards to uh -huh. win the game. And okay. in doing so, like, you can only do certain things on your turn. So it was hard to get the items and get, like, all of the pieces that you needed to, to win. Uh... Oh, what was it called? Magnum Opus. It was like you were, uh, you had to get ingredients or whatever, like, I don't know, sometimes you'd have to get iron or you'd have to get, uh, Dragon's Breath or whatever it was, I forget everything that mm -hmm. was in it, but it was like you had to get certain pieces and everything was like on a 9x9 nine nine board and, um there were different effects if you put something on the table or not it was it's hard to explain it's much easier than it seems but sometimes like my brain was just like i don't know what to play so i'd just throw a card down and it'd be completely wrong <laughs> i remember the first time i played dominion um i hadn't played many deck builder games or anything so my brain was a little fried initially into that. Because I had never played Magic either. Surprisingly, still have never played Magic. I'm yeah. curious, but... I haven't bothered playing Magic, but I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the day. I believe that. 
<laughs> I don't know if that's an insult or not. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Honestly, I played it because um, I used to watch the anime uh, when it when it aired in the U.S., mm -hmm. like the original one, it aired. I think it started airing in two thousand, and so I watched the anime. And then, like, my dad found a starter deck, and he was like, well, she really likes this anime, maybe she'll, like, play the card game. And ended mm -hmm. up, my neighbor down the street, he would play it too, so we would duel each other, and <laughs> it was so dumb. <laughs> hey, Vape Lord, that's not nice, he just called me a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck. Yeah, well, I'd well, like to see what your deck is like. <laughs> that's enough deck talk here. <laughs> Bo Bo <laughs> Bobo the magic cone says she has the heart of the cards. Heck yeah, I do. That's how I won every time. Don't judge me. I had like three harpies in my deck, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it got to the point where I just started collecting the cards because I thought the art was cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'd like to, I'd like to see, um, I'd like to see how much money my cards are worth now, despite, like, being out of the package and definitely used. Like, none of them, I think there were maybe, like, three or four that were bent that, like, was in my deck mm -hmm. for so long, and I never, I never had any, like, card holders, you know? I didn't put them in little card sleeves like collectors do, so a ah. lot of them were just in a shoebox for years. <laughs> <laughs> I know some of the old holographics will go for a good bit of money. I've got a friend who uh, buys and sells Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Uh-huh. At least in France, that's what he does. Apparently, apparently English cards in France go for a heck of a lot of money because it's, they're rarer, and especially, like, the holographic ones, like, apparently European holographics cards have, like, a different pattern than uh the u.s huh. ones do and the u.s ones i think are worth more in europe because of the pattern that they have uh-huh i don't i don't know how or why but it is <laughs> that's just apparently that's just the way the market is over there so he when he came to visit me it was funny uh we spent like two days I think two different weekends, because he stayed a few weeks, and like two different weekends we went down to a card shop that had, I have never seen a card shop that was basically nothing but Yu-Gi-Oh. There were more Yu-Gi-Oh cards in there than I've ever seen anywhere else, because like, you know, most places have Magic the Gathering because that's a big tournament game, um, and like, they just had a wall that I think it was probably nine shelves high, and it was like probably 10 20 feet across and i think more than half of it was all Yu-Gi-Oh cards it was insane mm -hmm. that's amazing how much that stuff i didn't realize initially that pokemon and is it po and Yu-Gi-Oh cards are so sought after I know, I would have never guessed that in a million years. Like, when I first started, like, I knew it would probably be big in Japan, right? Where it came from. Like, that would be mm -hmm. a huge thing in Japan. Because they love their, like, collectible card stuff and, and different things like that. But I never guessed in, a, in, like, Europe or America that anything other than magic would get that big. But no, there's a huge, apparently in the small town about 45 minutes away from me, there's a huge... A uh, community of Yu-Gi-Oh gamers. It's crazy. They have like a tournament at that shop, like of a couple of weekends every month, I think. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of neat. Nice. It was fine for me to go there, even though like I'm not, I haven't touched Yu-Gi-Oh since the early 2000s. So I'm like, I didn't bother, look, like, I looked at the cards, but I didn't bother to buy anything myself. But, like, right across the street, I could just leave my friend in that store, take however long he wants, and I was across the street at a comic shop looking at comic books. <laughs> <laughs>
they had Gru comics, and I was so excited because uh, those Gru comics were just super cool. I haven't seen that in a while. This weird magic thing kind of came about because I was having trouble with his hand and I didn't want to keep bothering with it. <laughs> that's a that's a fun fact. A little bit of trivia. Well, unfortunately, it's about that time. Oh man, kicking us off. I'm kicking us out. You gotta go. Man. But everybody yeah. who's in chat, um, if you stay for like another 15 minutes, Spellburn will be on right after this. So. Check it out. Yep. Check stay it out. tuned. Well, thanks, guys. Um,. We'll see what happens next week or when we're doing it or not. But thanks again for coming and bearing with us, even though I'm not much of a talker when I'm focusing at times. But hopefully we'll see you next time. Everybody have a good night.